Lovelies, it's Miss Lady Lace here on my Pin Up Glamour channel and Pin Up Glamour podcast and today I have for you my next topic where I'm going to be discussing how I create a burlesque routine to further help you in your burlesque journey. If you're a longtime glamorous friend, welcome back. And if you're new here, I create tutorials and topics on pinup burlesque and the glamorous lifestyle as well as so much more. So if you love any of these things, be sure to subscribe as I share new fabulous videos every week. One of my goals is to share a burlesque video every month. So this month I'm going to be discussing how I create my routines. And I think next month I might share a free burlesque class. I do have my online burlesque classes with my glamour community. And this video has actually been requested by one of my patrons. So today we are talking about how to create a burlesque routine. A lot of the things we're talking about today can also be applied to other forms of performance as well as pinup competitions and other vintage fun such as this. If you're thinking about creating your own performance, it can be really difficult at the start, especially if you don't know where to start. And sometimes when we don't know where to start, we kind of just stall in this position of thinking, I want to do a thing, but I don't know where to start. And it's just a cycle that keeps going. And we really want to break that and create some sort of production plan and focus for us to really create something amazing. I think one of the hardest things at the start is we want everything to be perfect. We want to be the perfect dancer, have the perfect song, the perfect props, everything has to be perfect. I myself in the past have been like this and I've known many of my students to also have a similar mentality of needing that perfection but it really just is never going to be possible. One of the amazing things about burlesque I find for myself is how I can progress as a performer and with my individual performances. Quite often when I debut something to how I perform it now is very different to how it started and being able to grow and develop that routine is something truly extraordinary. So we don't want to put pressure on waiting for the perfect situation to happen. We need to make it happen ourselves because life is too short not to dream big and make it happen. I'll now break down how I sort of structure and create my routines. Keep in mind there are no strict rules in any sense and you can take what I teach today, mash it all together, mix match it around or do something completely different. I'm just hoping today will give you a bit of inspiration and help you develop your own routine. We'll start with step number one which is inspiration. Quite often before I start a routine I have an inspiration that leads me to create that routine. It could be something as simple as a color, a vintage dress, some design in architecture, it could be jewelry, it could be an animal, it could be a song, a movie. Anything that you find inspiration from would be your starting point. Now sometimes that inspiration won't come organically so you want to do some research, maybe look into some vintage burlesque performances for inspiration, maybe look at some fashion design or something that will draw you to find the inspiration. If you're not having anything come from just that inspiration, make your first performance that inspiration starting point. Find an opportunity where you can perform, have a date in mind for when you want to do stuff by. Quite often for me it'll be I might have a show on this day so I need everything ready by then. I might be competing in something like mixed burlesque, so I need to create certain routines to cater for that competition. Having an actual performance for something could be your inspiration to create it. Step number two is my concept. So I want to really take my inspiration or whatever I'm working on and hone that into a more solid concept. In this step I also want to think about my production plan, brainstorming ideas and really just refining all that I'm working on so I have something solid to further develop. For instance, your inspiration could be vintage classic burlesque and you could hone that into a concept of a Betty Page inspired routine. To help you refine that concept, you can create a brainstorm or mind map, write it down or do it on your computer, create your idea in the middle, your inspiration and brainstorm ideas all around this to help you further refine that. Once you've done a bit of refining, you then want to work on a production plan. So when do you need to get things done by? When is your performance date? Do you need to source costumes, have them made or make them yourself? Do you need to edit your music? Really write down all the things you need to do when they need to be done by and this will help you keep on track and make your goals attainable. Step number three is to design. You want to design what you want your performance to be 
like. Think about what your costume looks like, how you want to move on stage, your characterization, design your character, design your performance, design the costume. Really break down all the elements and how you want them to look. This is quite good to sketch them on paper or go into somewhere like Pinterest and create an inspiration board for what you want the mood of your performance to be. Step number four is your music. Now, if you've already picked out your music, it could have been your inspiration point. Sometimes I find a track and I'm like, this is what I want to create a performance with. And I would say that's usually the way I prefer to do things, as music can be very difficult when you're searching for something very specific to match what you have in mind. In saying this, if you have not got your track, this is definitely the point where we want to start doing some research, narrowing down what sort of sound we want for our performance. There are such limitless options from vintage burlesque music to classical music to modern hip hop to something completely different. You can really have fun with your music choices. One of my favorite things to do is to edit tracks together. So this is definitely the point where I want to start editing things as well with my song choice. So if I find a few tracks I want to blend together, I use GarageBand to edit all my tracks. It's super easy and that's a Mac product. If you don't have that, there are many other free options available or people in your community who quite often either will do that to help you out or there are people who you can pay to edit your tracks together too. Your music selection can be very powerful so I'd recommend making sure you consider that very carefully when creating your performance. Think about how the music flows, the structure of that music, how you can create a strip tease around that or whatever performance style you're working on. Your music and how you apply your musicality can really change the effect of that song. If I were to take five performers and give them the same track, quite often they'd each create something different. So really find something that suits you and what you want to create. Step number five is costuming. Now I have put this before choreography as it's a good idea to have some of your costuming ready to play with as burlesque is the art of the tease and quite often has a strip tease included. How our choreography affects that strip tease is quite intricate and heavily dictated by the costume. You want to think about how you can remove those items on stage. Simple things like gloves come off quite easily but we want to make sure we get the right style to do we want opera length? Do we want a gardening glove for a gardening inspired routine? We really want to have an understanding of our costume and have those fundamental pieces to rehearse with and create that choreography around. If you know your costuming isn't going to be ready to start that choreography, you can definitely still do that choreography without some of that costuming if required. For costuming, I'm a gal who doesn't like to spend a lot of money to look fabulous and I definitely apply this to on stage. So a lot of my fabulous gowns that I wear in my strip teasers are quite often sourced from op shops. I also make a lot of items myself and you can also take items like costume pieces that could be just a basic bra, you cover that in a fabric and you've easily got something far more glam than the beige bra that you bought. If nothing else in this step, just try and have those basic elements or an idea idea of what you want to make so you know how to remove it on stage. Though this will change once you start actually using it in your rehearsals and choreography. Step number six is creating our choreography and this is definitely something that can be very difficult for many people. Some performers will outsource choreography to an actual choreographer. I wouldn't say I know too many people who do this. Most burlesque artists create most of what they do themselves, though there's no shame if you do require either some assistance or you want to hire someone completely to do that. When I create my choreography, I think about the dance as a beginning, the middle and the end, sort of just like your basic story. Now, depending what your performance is and your concept, your ideas, what you're channeling into this will definitely change how this is going to flow. But you want to think about a few basic things. So think about the introduction. How do you want to start your dance? Are you on stage? Do you walk from off stage to on stage? Do you walk through the crowd to the stage? Do you start on stage, the lights hit you, the music cues, and then you start your routine? That beginning is a really impactful moment that really sets the tone for that performance. Our middle, you want to really think about it as the actual structure of the strip tease. 
So we have our introduction to us and then we start to tease and remove items. You really want to think about matching your musicality. So if you have something like a ba bow moment, this could be a corset coming off with that to sync up with that musicality. This is where our music really will inform what we're doing on stage. Our end is the big finish. It's that big reveal. It could be you getting into your giant martini glass on stage. It could be as simple as a final removal of an item. It could be those tassel twirling moments. It can be whatever you imagine. Whatever it is you want that to also be impactful. Do you finish in a final pose? Do you walk through the audience as the music begins to fade? Think about how you want that to come across. Creating the actual choreography, I would say, is a lot like starting. Quite often, once we've done all that work before, we start to think, oh, what could I do here? What could I do there? And we do that cycle again where we just stall. We do nothing. We think constantly about what we could do, but we don't actually do anything. I do this all the time, especially with choreography. And the best thing you can do is pop on that music and start moving around. See what your body organically likes to do. When I create a routine to teach students, especially, it is very structured. I have my choreography written down really thoroughly, broken down into those counts. So both I remember and I've created something that the students can follow along with quite easily and ensure that we're all on the same counts. When I choreograph my own routines though, I am not as structured as this. I may take notes to what I want certain sections to be like to cue with the music, but I think about this more like choreographing events. So I have my introduction is one event. Each striptease item coming off is another event. So I'm really catering it to that. I also create space in my routine for improvisation. So I create those moments where I'm able to interact with the crowd and have that fun moment. And I'm not too hard on myself if something doesn't work perfectly. So I have that flexibility and mobility through the routine. So if something doesn't go right, so if we're taking off something like a robe and the ribbon gets caught, I'll allow extra time to be able to fix that up or move my routine. It's not really structured that if something goes wrong, everything just falls apart from there. I need to have that flexibility as striptease is something that quite often will go wrong. While I'm saying I'm a little bit more flexible with myself, especially if you are newer to dance, I'd recommend taking notes what you want your introduction, your striptease, your cue points, and how you want to finish. What beats are you hitting? Just to ensure that you don't forget what you're doing. And another really fabulous option is also recording as you go. Film your favorite little pieces, film as you've planned out that choreography so you don't forget what you've created. And this is a really easy reference point to go back to. Step number seven is to refine. At this point, you really wanna break down that costuming, make sure you've got everything sorted out in that department, refining that choreography and marrying that together with the costume. You also wanna think about hair and makeup, shoes, are you wearing stockings and all these other elements. We really want to continue to refine what we have, which will flow us into step number eight, which is to rehearse. We want to rehearse and rehearse and rehearse, making that fabulous. Even just listening to that song, really understanding all the different musicality elements that you can help bring out in your performance. I would recommend rehearsing as much as you can with your costume. I know some people are a little bit worried about, oh, it might get dirty or damaged or something might go wrong. But this is the time that you really want to iron out anything that could go wrong. By rehearsing with that costume, if something gets stuck, or if your hair gets in the way, rehearse with your full hair and makeup, rehearse with your jewelry, rehearse with your performance shoes. Really see how everything feels and fits together, because if something's gonna go wrong, you want to be able to create a plan B to correct that. Once we've rehearsed that lots and lots, we are ready for the stage. And it's important to remember, practice makes better both for your performance and actually performing on stage it's completely different rehearsing at home to being on stage so practice will make better in this aspect the more you rehearse the more you'll improve and the more you perform on stage the more you'll improve in this area too everyone feels nervous before a performance and that's perfectly normal i think one of the most fabulous things about being a solo burlesque performer is no one knows your routine if something goes wrong 
no one needs to know just keep smiling if something's stuck just be playful and cheeky or play into your character so it doesn't look like a mistake at all i have seen so many routines where i thought they went fabulously and the performer has come off stage and said everything went wrong but it looked incredible so you just want to have that confidence on stage and no one is going to know now you may be ready for a performance but not actually have a performance opportunity now there are lots of different ways we can acquire stage time we can go through a Bella school where they offer a soloist program or student performance opportunities. We could contact local producers and let them know we've put an act together. I would highly, highly recommend including just a video of you performing, even if it's just in your lounge room, just so the producer has an idea of what you look like. As a producer myself, I receive a lot of applications, but quite often, especially if I've not seen a performer, it's hard for me to gauge their style and if that suits my show. So you really want to send that video as that will make you so much more hireable than just saying, I'd like to perform. If you don't have an opportunity, go out of your way to make an opportunity for yourself as that's the best way you're actually going to get that stage time. I truly hope you found today's video to be a little bit helpful and if nothing else that you take away from this is just to start creating and just to start working on something yourself. If you did enjoy today's topic, be sure to give it a like and a comment as that really does help me out. And if you're listening from Spotify, you can also follow the podcast. And if you loved it, also review too. If you'd like early access to my content, I do have my Glamour community on Patreon. I'd like to thank all my patrons, but especially my Burlesque Glamour students and VIP Glamour patrons. The support you give me truly helps me in creating more fabulous content like this. To follow my daily pinup adventures and for some burlesque inspiration, I post super regularly to Instagram and TikTok. Simply follow at Miss Lady Lace and be sure to drop me a message so I can follow you back too. To never miss out on one of my fabulous uploads, be sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll be seeing you in my next video. Stay glamorous!